In today's video, we are testing the limits of cooking with thermite. What can and can't be done? Guys, in the past we have had videos of cooking with thermite. Granted, a video where he cooks some hamburgers with it, and he's not the only one who's cooked with no. thermite either. Modern Rogue actually did a really cool video a few years back of cooking a steak with thermite. It was really cool to see, but several of you have asked to see us do this as well. Here's the basic idea. We have a variety of foods and we have some thermite. We want to see what can be cooked with thermite, what different methods work best, and what's going to end in disaster. We thought while we're cooking things with thermite, we might as well expand a little bit. So while we are going to cook up some steaks, we've also got some other things on our plate, as it were. We have some ingredients for s'mores. We have all the fixins for a nice grilled cheese sandwich. I'm most excited about this. This is creme brulee. If you're not familiar with creme brulee, it's a sort of egg custard, but the fun part of it is you put sugar on top and then using, usually it's done with a torch, but there's many methods. This suggests the broiler in your oven. You cook and caramelize the sugar so it turns into like a nice candy layer on top and then you can crack it with the spoon and it's very exciting. So we wanna see if we can use thermite to properly caramelize that sugar on the surface of our creme brulee. And given that it's a dessert that's both a custard and something that you use fire to make, it's obviously like my absolute favorite. So I'm very excited about this today, you guys. Along with that idea that it's easy to get a high intense heat, but harder to cook slowly through, we're gonna be trying to cook our steak in a couple of different ways. We've actually got three steaks. This one right here on the plate is uncooked. It's just been sitting out. It has some salt on it to give it a little bit of extra flavor. And we're gonna try, we're gonna ignite thermite, have it pour down, then put a grill over it and put the steak above that. That's very similar to how Grant cooked the hamburger and that seemed to work pretty well, so we're going to try it. But we are concerned that the heat is going to be so intense that while it will cook the outside, the inside of the steak is just gonna be raw. And I mean like, not even blue rare, just, just raw Like on the I inside. like their steak, but I've seen what this will do. And there's, that's... Yeah, there's a real possibility it won't work out. So we also went ahead and we took two steaks, put them in vacuum bags, and we've had those sous vide cooking for three hours now. I think <laughs> originally we were gonna do two, but we lost track of time a little bit. So it's been about three hours, but that should be fine. For those of you who don't know, sous vide cooking is when you take food, it's in a plastic bag, and that gets put into some water that is very carefully temperature controlled. So we've had our water at about 131 degrees Fahrenheit, which should give us a nice medium rare steak. So hopefully if this steak gets too seared on the outside, raw on the inside, the sous vide steak, which has just been cooking up to the perfect interior temperature all this time, we should be able to get like a nice crust on the outside, but then have it already cooked just the right amount on the inside. That's the hope. Just gonna try and make a, a vaguely steak size and shaped pile of thermite here. It will probably liquefy, at which point it'll just run into whatever shape it wants to anyway. But we're just gonna try it, I think, about like that. That looks like quite a bit of thermite and should get us quite a good reaction. Let there be light! Oh, I can feel that Whoa. really well. I heard our terracotta plate there it shattering. Goes. That's okay, that's okay. It's still holding most of it. Get We're the just steak. Throw that right there. We can't even look at it, is the problem. Oh my goodness. Let's take a look at the other side of the steak. Ooh, that's, uh, that's a little weak, honestly. Yeah, I was expecting a lot more than that. Here's the question Should we have the steak over the thermite as it lights? Yes. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> Ooh, that actually smells really oh, good. Oh, it does! Quick, flip it over, get the other side! <laughs> hey, look at that! That looks kind of like a seared steak. I think we actually did it. We're gonna take this off and we're gonna see what's going on on the inside. My prediction is that it is extremely rare <laughs> on the inside. Okay, even oh, I God. don't particularly think that that's cooked. It's warm. It's warm, yeah, I'd say that's probably like ballparking it. I'm gonna say that's around like 105-ish degrees Fahrenheit, which is not enough. All right, so here's the question. What should we do with the sous vide steaks? Should we do the same thing and just flare it, maybe even slightly less thermite, so we do get a cook on the outside, but not quite that much? Or should we try it in a pan? Do you wanna just pour thermite down onto the steak I itself? I wanna bury the steak in a thermite sandcastle. Okay. <laughs> 
That's beautiful. Gross. We should at least cut through it to see. I was about to say I would be willing to take a bite, but it's just covered in not. metal right now, guys. I'm not gonna do that. Wow, look at that color change. Yeah, I think that actually cooked the inside a little bit too. I guess that shouldn't be surprising. Direct contact. All right, so I think we can call it direct contact with the thermite. Not a good way to cook a steak? Mm, probably not, guys. Maybe All don't right. do that. All right, let's make some more thermite and let's actually try to cook one of these to perfection. All right, so there is a, a YouTube channel called Sous Vide Everything. You just The guy cooks a lot of stuff sous vide. I really enjoy watching it. If you, uh, if you like steak and watching people cook steak, you should definitely check it out. But every time he sous vides a steak, he says it doesn't look too good right now. Watch this, because it needs a crust on it. So, doesn't look too good right now. Watch this, let's do it. My goodness, that is so warm. Well, I don't know if the steak felt it, but I did. Should we flip it over to the other side? Let's let it go for a bit here. Wait till that stops being orange. It's still getting some good heat off of it, I think, and then we can add more thermite, flip it, try for the other side. All right. Yeah, this is the side that got cooked, and it doesn't look bad, but it's just not done enough. It needs more. For a second, before Ow, the flames got too perfect. intense to look at, I could see light shining through the steak. That is so cool. Pretty well toasty on one side, and the other side is not great, but not bad. This side is okay. We're a little too high up for that. We're in a workshop. We're gonna use a workshop knife. Wow. That is looking pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah? Yeah. I'm a little concerned about what sort of like chemicals might be in the smoke that bonded to the outside crust layer, but. This will either be delicious or a nightmare. So pretty. We got a little bit of soot. I see some melted cheese. That's, That's a, good a good sign. sign. Holy cow, that looks perfect. It's pretty melty on the inside. So excessively toasty on one end. I'm gonna fix that, hang on. I like a little bit of char on mine, but not quite that much. I did not think that was gonna There's work. a little bit of a chemical smoke burned flavor to it. But not bad. Nate's got those all set up, and we have here just a sheet of steel. We're hoping that it's thick enough that the thermite isn't going to melt right through it and drip into our cream brulee, but we are hoping that it gets hot enough that that heat radiates down onto the cream brulee itself and melts that sugar. The plate warped. Oh no. oh no! It's all right, it's still gonna be really hot. Something is so mad about that. Some flames, and oh, I'm not sure what exactly fire. is burning. Sugar, probably. It's possible. <laughs> Just move it back a little bit. Oh boy! Wow! Wow! Less thermite or less time, maybe? Uh, I don't know, but this part over those. here that isn't looks... cooked at all. So I guess that could be a placement issue, or that's just where the bent steel like curved yeah, it up. Yeah, came up. So this, we do have that side plate. doesn't look terrible. It's still more burn than you want it to be. Some of it didn't cook at all, so that was just too much direct heat. I wonder if we lifted that steel up just a couple of inches. We have one other option here. I got a thicker metal sheet, so we're gonna try that next. <laughs> Glorious. Ooh. I didn't even touch it. Didn't seem to do much of anything. Let it sit there, it may still melt some sugar. Back when creme brulee was invented as a dessert, we didn't have the tiny little handheld butane torches that we use now, so what they actually did was very similar to this to caramelize the sugar on top. They would take just a flat piece of iron or steel and keep that in a furnace until it was nice and hot, you know, to cook fire, and then they would just hold it over the sugar to try and melt it. Not nearly as precise and controlled as the, the nice little torches we have now, I think probably much easier for us than it was for whoever came up with this idea. The coverage is definitely not perfect, but we actually have quite a good melt right in there, and I think as it cools down, we're gonna get that nice shell that is a hallmark of a good creme brulee. 
All right, we've got our three creme brulees, different levels of doneness. This one burnt over most of it. Yeah. Some of these edge bits might be okay. You can see though. That did That's crack. The wrong way. Yeah, that. So this one, burn, 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 and then raw. Like, there's no, no Hard like. Hard line there. But you still get the. It's a, it's a good shell right there. I don't think it counts as a shell when it's just burned. And then this one, more of it is not cooked, like around the edge, there's a good bit. But here in the middle, listen. Let's try and crack that. Oh, it's perfect. Oh that's my gosh, good. that's All perfect. Right, I'm gonna try a bite of this. Do it. Thermite creme brulee. That is good. Mm -hmm. Good crunch on the part, it caramelized well. Oh my goodness, this is my favorite dessert in the world. I am not upset at all. We got our new batch of thermite mixed up. I've got my malo, I've got my graham, got my chocolate. Ready to roast this sucker. Because obviously grilled cheese steak and cream brulee was not a big enough meal for us. A second dessert. We've got a few different approaches we're gonna use for these marshmallows. This one is just gonna sit right on top of the pile of thermite. That'll Callie, go well. Callie, how are you gonna do yours? I'm going to light the thermite and then I'm going to stay there and I'm actually just gonna hold mine over the flare as it goes. I'm gonna wait till it's reduced down to an orange glow and see if I can get a nice even cook on my marshmallow because I want to enjoy this. <laughs> I feel like I should be closer, but I know I shouldn't be. Woo! Plate cracked. Perfect. You want a nice orange glowing heat. Even distribution, golden brown crust. Look at that s'more. Look at it. Guys, that's not all you know. We've always got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top to check out our most recent video and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.